Moving on, and while some of us will get a good night's sleep tonight, there are plenty of Aussie kids quaking in their boots. All because tomorrow the National School Testing Program, NAPLAN, gets underway for another year. For a school kid, there are some fundamental fears. Being dapped at recess, anything to do with algebra, and being seen at a Justin Bieber concert with your dad. But if you believe the hype, nothing strikes fear into a school kid's heart like NAPLAN. But while it scares the bejeebas out of kids, it just makes teachers and principals grumpy. There's a lot of pressure put on some students by some parents and admittedly by some schools. It's now been moved into the area of high stakes testing. Tomorrow, the National Assessment Program for Literacy and Numeracy turns seven. Seven long years of kids, teachers, parents and principals freaking out over a few simple tests. And that plan was never designed as being a tool for overarchingly ranking schools or students in comparison with each other. Around one million Aussie kids in years three, five, seven and nine will be drilled on reading, writing, language conventions and numeracy. The data is collated, then published on the My School website at the end of the year. And there's the rub. The ranking has introduced a competitive element. That's actually causing schools to change the way they teach so that they're practising and practising and practising that plan. There's much less time for the other subjects that parents want their kids to be studying. In the wake of last year's NAPLAN testing, Green Senator Penny Wright called a Senate inquiry. We heard that some kids are excessively anxious, some kids are vomiting, some kids are sleepless. Parents are being discouraged from allowing their kids to sit the NAPLAN test in some cases. So it's having a really adverse impact. So seven years in and at an annual cost of more than eight million bucks, is NAPLAN really worth it? Rob Randell is the head of the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority who roll out NAPLAN each year. Rob, kids vomiting, teachers stressed out, principals angry about my school ratings. Is this test really worth it? Absolutely it is. Um, the test tells us how we're going in these important areas of literacy and numeracy. And I'd also add that I think the great majority of principals, teachers and mums and dads have got it in perspective. So those instances you mentioned, we're concerned about them, but I think they're a small beer in the whole overall game. Yeah, I tend to agree with that, Rob. What's your view of schools using the NAPLAN results uh, to rank themselves? And it ends up, of course, on the My School website. What's your view of that? Well, we don't support any ranking uh, unfair comparisons of schools. We've uh, set My School website up to be able to provide some fair comparisons, taking account the, of the background of students that the school's dealing with, because we think that's an important consideration. But uh, our whole focus is on making fair comparisons. Now, Rob, we put a shout out today to our viewers about their thoughts on NAPLAN. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of responses. This is from a mum. My daughter's almost nine. Last Thursday, she pulled out all of her eyelashes. When I asked her why, she said, I'm worried about NAPLAN, mum. This is what NAPLAN has created. Another from Vera. Her son has been exhausted, quiet and moody. One of his friends has been on medication because of anxiety. I mean, they're not exactly positive school experiences, though, Rob. How can we help these kids with NAPLAN? Well, again, um, issues like that and uh, need uh, following up, and I'd be concerned and, and want to do as much as I can about that. But I'd also want to stress the point I made earlier. I think the great majority uh, of young people preparing for tomorrow's NAPLAN test have got it in context. Great majority of schools and mums and dads are there. And I think the important thing for mums and dads and the other adults in working with young people here is to work with them, understand why they're getting anxious and give them some tips, some, uh, some advice about how to manage it. Rob, I have devised a short little NAPLAN test for yourself. Um, three quick questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, how are you feeling? Um, yes. Stressed out or, or vomity? Well, coming along here today, I was a bit stressed out, but if I just keep calm about it, I'll be OK. I think it's okay. going OK so far. Well, well handled. OK, question number one. What is the square root of 121? 11. Correct. Oh. A bit of a pause there. I was getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what year was Federation? 1901. Ooh. Correct. And finally, and I think the toughest question, who let the dogs out? <laughs> Uh, I look, I might need some coaching on that one. Two out of three is not bad. I'll the Baha man was the answer you were looking for. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. The Baha man, thank you very much. Overall, a stellar performance tonight, Rob. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I don't understand why they signpost it. I mean, if, if you can't prepare for it, you can't study, and we're just trying to compare, why don't they just show up on a random day, 
and let the kids sit the test. I've had oh. eight goes at this, not myself personally, but children <laughs> have <laughs> done eight <laughs> nap plans. No dramas, no tears, no vomiting that I know of. And then when you get the results back, you need to be able to do the nap plan yourself to work out what they mean. You can't work it <laughs> well, out you, anyway. Well, you've got possibly you know wonderful, resilient kids, but some families do find it stressful. And I think what to remember is um, you can read your kid a book at night. That would be more beneficial than sitting down with a let's try and study for nap plan test. But can't you take that anxiety out? If we don't tell them when it's happening, they can't get anxious well, about you, it showing up. No, you watch, I mean, you know, if you've been a teacher, you know how schools work, though. There has to be some sort of structure in terms of the kids sitting at all, and I'm sure they've got particular conditions. I've been a doctor, not a teacher. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'd fail that plan, I'm sure. I think there has to be some sort of structure for for for, for, for the school to probably do it, okay, but fine. but I, I think we, the answers, so. we don't have to. I don't think. Don't worry about. It. I mean, you can you can get your kids to write out the shopping list. That is practicing yeah. their literacy rather than seeing them down and practicing for a test that doesn't really matter. I have yeah. three boys. I'm more worried about the nappy sand test, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>